All right, in this video, what we're going to do is calculate the derivative at x equals six of the function f of x equals the square root of 42 minus x. In this video, I'm gonna be using the h version of the definition of a limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. First thing I've done is set this up. I've just plugged in six for my a value here. What I like to do is to evaluate this stuff in, in the numerator separately. So let's look at this real fast. So f of six plus h is simply plugging in six plus h for x into this expression. So that would give me 42 minus six plus h. Uh, just clean this up a little bit, uh, distributing that negative through. So I get a negative six and a negative h. Uh, 42 minus six would be 36 minus h. And then to calculate f of six, f of six is just plugging in a six now, a little bit easier into this. This will give me the square root of 36, which we know is just six. All right, then what I'm going to do is replace these with the expressions I just calculated here. f of six plus h was the square root of 36 minus h minus f of six, which is simply six. Now, as always with these limits, um, in this case, my denominator is going to zero, which is the main issue. What I need to do is figure out a way to get rid of that zero in the denominator, see if I can evaluate this limit. In this case right here, since we have this square root term, one of the main tricks we will use for this is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the numerator. The reason for multiplying by the conjugate here of this numerator, especially when I have a square root, is because of this fact over here, which we know is the multiplication of two conjugates or the difference of squares, however you wanna think about this. But the idea will be when I multiply this by its conjugate, which is exactly the same except for a plus, the result will be the first term squared minus the second term squared. And that squaring is useful when we have a square root because if I square something with a square root, it simply cancels out that square root. So what I get from this, when I multiply this numerator by this conjugate, I'll get the square root of 36 minus h squared. That squared cancels that square root, leaving me here, which is 36 minus h, minus the second term squared, so six squared is 36. Whenever you do this, the denominator won't be so nice, but I'm not gonna multiply stuff out. I'm just gonna leave it in its factored form. And a reason I do this is because I'm looking to cancel this factor of h. This is what makes the denominator go to zero. So I'm gonna leave it factored and just multiply it here by just 36, the square root of 36 minus h plus the six. All right then, um, to clean things up here, I'm gonna just cancel this positive 36 and the negative 36. Now I actually can do what I was hoping I can do. I can cancel that factor of h between the numerator and the denominator right here. And let me write, rewrite this up here. That canceling of the h, as said before, was exactly what I was hoping for. This denominator now is not going to zero. And because this is a rational radical combination function, it's continuous as long as that h value, that value I want to plug in, is within its domain, which it is because the denominator won't go to zero. So my next move is to simply plug in zero for the h right here to evaluate this limit, which will give us one over the square root of 36 minus zero plus six. This is the square root of 36, which is just six. So this will give us negative one over six plus six, which finally simplifies into negative one twelfth.